papers from just a little exploratory type of, um, of washes that I did in gouache and in acrylic. And um, I have other papers that I've done in watercolor and they're great to use, use in, your, in your artwork when you're creating collage. So I've taken this piece here and I've cut it into several little strips and I've used them within the work. So I glued down and I used um, a matte medium by Golden, an acrylic artist medium. And I had applied it to the backs of my paper and glued it down. So this is, this is basically how I was doing it. I would cut up my pieces and then I was kind of holding it up to the edge of her leg and measuring it out to the edge of the paper. And then I would simply cut, as you can see there. And then in order to glue it down, I would take my matte medium and I just get a little bit on my brush. So I load my brush with matte medium and then I would apply it to the back. And I would make sure to get my edges really well, not do too much on there. press it down and then I would, if I had a little bit left over, I'd just snip it off, okay? Um, I'm, I've got to make a decision. Well, what kind of color scheme do I want to do? I'm going to choose from, make my decision from this color index, which is fabulous. Um, it's by Jim Krause, and you can see I've used it a lot because it's got paint all over the cover. And so I have uh, my color scheme combos, my go-tos. And this is a, a quick color scheme combo page that I've marked. And so you begin selecting a color that will enforce your message if you're wanting to kind of state a message through color conceptually and will appeal to your visual audience or the audience that's going to be viewing your work. And so, you know, let's let's say if I wanted to create a color opposite of the blue and I wanted to have all of this be orange. So I might have, um, you know, a sunny orange to choose and it could be a base hue. Um, and I can use that to color and to use throughout the rest of the work. So I'm going to explore a color relationship to find these additional harmonies or additional colors that are going to, that will work in harmony with that first hue. And of course, really the first hue is blue. So there are many things that you could choose to have or to go into the background. So we could use this book and you can, we could, Say, okay, well, maybe I want to create an active color scheme. And you can kind of see here that this one has that blue, that actual almost exact blue in it. And it looks like there's a, maybe a dulled down orange and a more brighter, even a bolder reddish orange. And then um, a really bright green. So that would be an interesting color choice to choose. So let's go ahead and make our um, our mix our colors to, for to use. Okay, so my color palette that I have here that I'm going to be using for my mixing palette rather is a Masterson uh, palette, and as you can see, it is a large, big container, plastic container that's been used. You can see all of my marks all in here and the edges, <laughs> but. You can take um, the, with the Masterson palette, it comes with a sponge. That's the size of the box. And you soak this, make it soaking wet, and you squeeze it out, and then you place it in here. And then you will take your Masterson paper. So you can buy the paper that goes with it and soak it in hot water, submerge it in, in, a, in a container of hot water uh, for about 30 minutes. And then you take it and you lay it on top of your sponge and it's ready to go and it will keep your acrylic paints 
wet for a good several days. I mean, and when I mean several days, I'm surprised at how long it keeps, but it does. And then it can keep even longer, of course, when you add your lid on top and you seal it. Okay. You can buy these at Michael's, you can buy them at Hobby Lobby, you can buy them at Blick, you can order them online. So I'm gonna to the side. All right, so I'm gonna use about a, I believe that is a one inch brush. It might be a three fourths inch brush. That's what it looks like. I've got a little cup of water and I'm dipping my brush in there. And then I'm going to take some red. And I want to put it out onto my palette. I'm using very thin layers because I want some of my drawing to show through actually. So I want some of those marks to show through. So I'm gonna take some red and I want to take a little bit of white. So I'm gonna scoop some out with a little bit of a, just a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of this red over here and a little bit of this white too because I want to mix the red into the white. It's going to look pretty close to that color. I'm going to have to add a little bit more white because it's not enough. I'm using very thin fluid colors. So this color here is a pure all red um, by Golden. This is a fluid acrylic. So um, I love the way fluid acrylics flow across paper. And that's part of the reason I'm using it. So now that we've got our color, so you want to use a lot more white than what I did in the beginning. Okay, and then we're going to take it and we're going to color in right here at the back. Now you can see how transparent this is. So it's going to um, show whatever you have drawn underneath. And I'm not gonna cover up my black and white. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do that or not. But I don't think I'm going to. Okay. Stay with this blue, but lighten it up just a little bit. 